Hello, I thought I would just do a basic mixing and pouring art resin video for you, realizing that not everyone has even had the chance to play with resin, and a lot of folks are nervous about um, using it for the first time. I know I was. So I have here an acrylic pour I did some time ago that's been waiting for a clear coat of resin. thought this would be a perfect example for you. Um, I have used alcohol wipes and cleaned this off previously but you want to take alcohol wipes and that will help get rid of any oils or silicone or anything that might still be sitting on the surface and wipe it down really good. And I use the brand Art Resin and it's certified non-toxic so there's no VOCs or fumes. However, I am highly sensitive to everything due to a chronic illness I have. So I do recommend, um, if you are sensitive, to still wear a respirator, especially when you're heating up the resin. But for the most part, it's really safe to use, and it's even food safe when it's fully cured. So I have lots of different kinds of cups that I use for mixing. These are one of them that I use. They're fairly inexpensive, but they have ounces on them. Um, these are another type that I use and these are a little more heavy duty TCP global but yeah they've got it broken down into all kinds of measurements so they have a one to one ratio which is great two to one to one three to one four six so if you have different kinds of resins and the ratio is not just one to one it just shows you right here the lines and you just pour those lines and you know your measurements right so those are really good. And I will link all these in the description. Gotta be pretty specific when you're mixing resin or it won't cure right. So then I just take a large popsicle stick. They're like tongue depressors. And you wanna stir for at least three minutes and make sure that you scrape off your stick because like the hardener will stick to that and it won't mix in. And also scrape your sides really well. And you can usually tell when your resin's mixed because you won't see the, you know, the separated stringy parts in it. So just stir, scrape, make sure you're scraping the bottom too. Scrape your stick off, scrape your sides, and stir. So you're gonna see there's lots of bubbles forming in here. And I never worry about that because I'm gonna heat them up and they're all gonna come out. The bubbles have been the least of my problems when working with resin. It's usually dust. So I'll show you what I've done to help conquer the dust problem. And I live in Colorado, so winters are a little tough for resining. They recommend that you keep a room around 75 degrees for proper resin curing and consistently at 75 degrees or you may get some funny things happen in your resin. A little tougher when you live in a climate that's not uh, always a perfect 70 something degrees. You can see I've built a dam with a tape and I'll do a tutorial just to show you how to do that but this one was already ready to go when I decided to do this so it's not gonna have that in it but um, I will link what tape I use in the description and I will do a tutorial just on taping because I get a lot of questions about that but it creates um, you know a dam so I can build my resin up because on this piece I don't want it to drip over the sides. And that tape will come off in about three hours so that I can have a nice rounded edge on my resin. And the next thing I'm going to do is heat it up and pop all these bubbles. There's a couple tools you can use. I've got, um, this is a kitchen torch. It's my medium sized torch. And I also have this little benzomatic torch. So this is my baby, my medium torch. And then I've got three different heat guns. Well, I've got um, 
This is actually an embossing gun, and I use this all the time. It's great for popping bubbles. And then I've got a commercial heat gun. And that's more for like warming up and moving resin around. And then I've got just a cheap hair dryer. And that's how I make my oceanscapes I, and my waves. A lot of times that's what I'll use. So those are all my basic tools that I'll use on any one given resin pour. You want to not stay in one spot for too long. You don't want to boil your resin. But that helps pop a lot of the bubbles and makes it more liquid so that I can move it around on the canvas. And then I just discovered this amazing tool. It's become my favorite. And it's just a silicone paintbrush by Princeton. I love this thing. And they make different sizes, but it's perfect for moving your resin around and it come, the resin comes right off with an alcohol wipe. This resin is self-leveling, which is awesome, but I always make sure I get the resin everywhere and then let it work itself out. Then give it another go over with your heat gun or torch and pop the remaining bubbles and it's ready to cure. So here's my curing station and it's just a shelf unit and then you can buy these um, plastic covers that fit perfectly over the shelving unit. And then I have these um, mats um, that go on my shelves and the resin peels right off if I get any drips. But yeah, it's pretty super. And it just fits in my closet there. So you can see I've got other pieces in there. Pretty nice, I love it. It's been about three hours and I'm pulling that tape off. And it's still gummy, but it's coming off great and it's leaving a nice edge. So here's some detail for you. And I know this was probably a pretty boring video but I hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching.